Hey there, StarCraft fans, it's Aqua Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be Classic and Maru here on Alcyone from GSL Season 1 2024 for a Patreon cast. Bottom left, it's going to be Maru. Top left, it's going to be Classic. Man, this entire group from the second group stage of GSL Season 1 2024, Group A was amazing. It's nothing but PBTs. And there was a new patch that was released just before they started this group. So I think people are just trying to figure it out, including these players, which led to a lot of incredible games. So no proxies here from either player, just gateway on the high ground, Reaper hop up spot. We've got a barracks at the top of the ramp here. We've got gas coming in here from Maru. And this probe is scouting for proxies. That is a good idea to do against any Terran, but especially Maru, because Maru proxies are so, so, so good, because Maru himself is excellent, and maybe the best Terran player alive right now. We will have to see if he can win this GSL. Anyway, again, this is going to be a Patreon game. For those of you who support me at patreon.com slash Paladin for at least $1 a month, I really do appreciate your support. And if you're watching this the week of April the 5th, 2024, again, I value you and your support. And if you're watching this in late April 2024 or maybe early May, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. I'm here five or six times a week with StarCraft 2 content. All right. So a Reaper on the way. Some uh, Terrans opt to skip the Reaper. <laughs> Probe blocking. The SCV says, whatever. I can just make it here and lift and land it as soon as it's done. A perk of being Terran. Yeah, so so some Terrans, I would say a majority of Terrans skip this Reaper in the TVP matchup. But scouting is important, especially after a patch, right? A balance patch. So this Reaper, this Reaper's name is Becky. She's a drug rep who's at whose company says that they have the best new healing drugs. The Dominion says prove it. They're actually tired of her cheap pens and mugs. <laughs> so they dumped her in her Reaper suit to see about how her new healing healing drugs are going to work here. That's amazing. So look, good scout, right? Even if you don't kill anything, which is pretty hard to do against a good Protoss with this Reaper, you can scout, see the timing on the expand, say, okay, Cybercore. Well, actually, that was a one-gate expand into Cybercore. Probs. And the next is coming in, and I don't even know. Like, taking some shields off this doesn't seem all that amazing. But again, trying to get a probe kill when they're... Ooh, hallucinated. Ah, oh, Phoenix coming out. Somebody in a previous cast corrected me. So the sentries, I said that they were given a bonus to light ability on their attack, but instead they lost their light designation. And they were given a bonus to shield units, which is really weird, man. It really kind of changes PvP in certain ways. I think we've seen some videos on YouTube exploring that already. So Hallucinated Phoenix comes in and says, mm hmm factory, third CC coming up, sub three minutes, or right around three minutes. Cyclone out is going to burn down. No, oh, does force the Hallucinated Phoenix to evaporate. I don't think he bothered scanning that. I don't think there's enough energy for a scan anyway. Cyclones now have a bit of a cooldown between the lock-on. It used to be. You would just finish a lock-on, and then a new lock-on was immediately available. Now there's like a six-second delay in between those lock-ons. So that's, you know, a bit of a nerf to the Cyclone for sure. They were given more HP, though, I think. I think they buffed it up to 130 here. So Reaper cruising out across the map, trying to see what they can see. Third base warping in here at about 340. It's a bit of a ragtag army here. A sentry, a stalker, and a dev walk into a bar. Two stalkers are here now. The Cyclone is really the dangerous thing. Ah, Depth gets wiped out. Nothing has died for the Terran yet, and things are done. Okay. This is looking really bad for Classic all of a sudden. Okay, Stalkers get the Reaper, but, like, there's five Marines here. And the Cyclone probes are pulled to try to fight against this, and they do get it. Oh, that's a bit of a misstep there. Five probes died, but every Marine died with that. Wow, Cyclone only has one kill. Reinforcing Marines head back home. Say, that was not ideal for us. Yeah, but Chrono Boost is good, right? So Classic's going to be able to replace those probe kills. Really no problem. He is getting a Robotics Bay. That was, you know, it was a tough hold. I'll give him that. I mean, I think anybody who's watching this would have died right there. I think Mara would have just killed us, but Classic did manage to get us around on the Marines. I feel like a little bit of micro on those Marines 
could have done a ton more damage. I'm not sure what Mara was trying to do. Maybe, maybe trying to get some macro done back home. And he's like, well, I'm not winning with this push anyway, so whatever. We'll, we'll let the surround happen. Definitely sloppy, though. So we got ourselves a barracks, 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 barracks situation here for Mara. Marines and Marauders are going to be the place. Maybe some Cyclones in the mix here, too. An Oracle is on the way. So this Oracle name, this is actually the last Oracle name that I have. Oh, this isn't going to be seen by a lot of people for a while, but... Anyway, the Oracle name is Vin from the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson, one of my favorite series. It's a trilogy. After beating Ruin as preservation and handing the power over to Saza to become Harmony, she yearned to rest with her beloved Elend. But as all Mistborn do, she became restless and bored, uh, where she decided to once again take the skies as an Oracle for the glory of Kelsier. She never cared about the looks from others, so is never bothered when she's corrected to ire. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, Vin of the Mistborn series was definitely recommended from Falcon here. So, zappity zap, okay, two SCVs down, Marine count enough to shove these guys, or uh, this Oracle away, Vin. Okay, couple SCVs building, there we go. They're building some more barracks, they're dead now. Man, this Oracle, not bad at all. Seven kills on that Oracle? Man, when Tasteless and State cast this game, I think State said, I should start using oracles more in PBT. It's like, yeah, maybe you should. Maybe you should show up at a weird time where the Terran thinks there aren't going to be any oracles, and then you can get seven SCV kills. So avenges the five dead probes and then some. Really, really fantastic. Holy fleet beacon. All right, cool. So we're getting a fleet beacon at six minutes on three bases. Got the two Colossus out. Going to get a third, too. Have to imagine the magic number is three. Extended thermal lance, shield battery up. We've got ourselves a bit of a push out again. Round two here for Morrow. Got Metavax this time. Oh, we're picking up. And we're boosting. And let's go. Let's try to get a drop here. So he scans and sees most of the army is on the ramp. And he scans. So that Classic thinks that's where he's coming. What is this unload all about, though? I don't know. There's a probe here and a pylon coming up. So the ability to sneak up this way is basically zero. Dude, the Oracle's getting more kills. What the heck? 10 kill oracle vin is op they're trying to catch the oracle on the way back i think that's what these guys are trying to do oh that's a catch that is a catch see you later vin oh no the reaction time from classic dude classic is playing it pretty well that early attack caught him off guard i want to say but he's managed to get into three bases he's making tempests actually with that fleet beacon tech he's not going for carriers why does Morrow keep picking up and boosting and then unloading what is this dude I guess he knows he can't get a drop in unscouted, except maybe this one. Uh, ow, ow. Oh, God. So we unload Widow Mines at 750, but like. Sure. One probe dies. There are Colossus out. There are Tempests here. Your medevacs are not getting home. And Maru is like, all right, well, I guess we can commit to this. Let's go. Stalker gets obliterated. No, he's not committing at all. He's getting a fourth base. Here at the front, got a siege tank to defend against, I don't know, a depth harass, maybe some stalkers showing up, causing issues. Starport on the way, Ghost Academy coming in for Maru. He's like, all right. We're into the point of the game where we want some ghosts. CMPs are great. Ooh, it is carriers, though. Classic moving into a few more carriers here, not just going pure Tempest. But yeah, definitely trying to sky toss this thing. I'm on board. I'm on board. Let's see what we can get here. Again, if there are just a ton of Marines and Vikings getting produced four at a time, it's going to be tough, right? It's going to be really tough for carriers to get a lot done against Maru. If you can catch him by surprise and he doesn't start pumping Vikings four at a time, then yeah, maybe you can get some damage done here. But he is just preparing so, so, so well, working on air weapons level one. Classic doing the same thing, working on air weapons back in Protossville. Twilight Council coming in here. Two storms gonna be good no matter what the Terran player is doing. Adding some disruptors into the mix here. So both players pretty happy just to macro up. Fourth base of Maru has landed. This fourth base of Classic's been saturated for a while. Income tab says. Oops. Income tab says. <laughs> Up and down here in Classic's favor at the moment. That's the mule cycle. As always in TVPs. We get a really big swing back and forth with the mule cycle here. 
So, I mean, this Oracle's doing great. This is an 11 kill Oracle. Vin is alive at 10 minutes. That's bonkers. Let's see if she can, how long she can stay alive. But at this point, she's a revelation machine, right? She's out there trying to keep an eye on where Maro's army is. So there's a stasis ward down this way. Fifth base for Maro up at the 6 o'clock. Looking good. Working on plus two air. Still pumping Vikings. Four at a time. He recognizes he wants to deal with this. The Vikings are going to be great against everything here, honestly. The Tempest, the Carriers, the Colossus. I guess, oh, you know, they do bonus against Immortals, too. And Stalkers and Disruptors, just not Sentries. So, I mean, yeah. The Vikings are going to be great. I like it. I like what Maru is doing here. Cyclone doesn't get the pylon, and two Cyclones die for it. That hurts. Terran fans everywhere are like, ow. It's not, it's not how this is supposed to go. Maru is supposed to handle this Protoss quite ably, but you know? Might be a new time for Protoss. Stats is back. Classic's looking good. Hero's still a monster. Looks positioned to maybe win uh, a Protoss GSL for the first time in a while here. Like 2022. Ugh. Premier Tournament. I think the last one is Atlanta Dreamhack, which... <laughs> 2022, a while ago. EMP gets tossed. Vikings get their shots off. Both players just dancing. Oracle dies. Aw. See you later, Vin. Not enough Vikings to one-shot carriers or Tempests. But drilling a lot of damage in. This back and forth is hilarious. They're having a great time. Let's zoom out even more. This necessitates big-time zoom outs. Gold base trying to be taken here by Classic, but Maro has set up shop and is probably going to force a cancel on this. I don't know. Man, I don't know. Classic's going to try to save it. Disruptors zoning away a lot of those ground units, but Marauder sitting here with... Mm, what do they got? Plus two attack? Yeah, plus two, plus two. Working on plus three, plus three here. Psy Storm is done. Going to be really nice against this. Look at these SCVs at the front. They're repairing. So we're bringing SCVs to the front to repair these Vikings. My gosh, I love this from Maru. Look at him just casually expanding everywhere. I think we've covered all of the bases that are his. I guess this one I haven't mentioned in particular. But yeah, he's on six bases now. And just once you have enough Vikings to one-shot down a carrier, you're going to be pretty good. But until that point, it's tough. Shield batteries are here, although a lot of them are pretty low on energy. I would characterize these as very low on energy, but can still pop a shield battery overcharge on those if necessary. Sensor tower gets sniped. Widow mine shot gets dodged. Classic expanding down the right side now. More carries being produced, and both players are maxed out. Here at 198 to 198 supply. Charge is on the way for them zealots. Yeah, this is the problem with having a Tempest versus Viking battle. It's just, it's all kiting. It's all back and forth. And yeah, ooh, good snipe on a uh, Colossus there. Excellent, excellent work. Really good. Cannons up to make sure that, like, two Marines can't wander over here and start, start killing stuff. I don't know, maybe Classic could expand here. Maru just really put a lot in this basket of killing this base. Making sure the gold doesn't happen while having the gold of his own, which is helping his income. As we can see down that way, 83 to 76 workers, that's an advantage, but also mules doing good work here. EMP's getting tossed, and three of the five Tempests catch that EMP. Viking shots, a little bit of snipe going on. These Marines are really overstimmed. And speaking of being low energy, I'm not even sure how many medevacs are here. Two. There are two medevacs here. Three on the map. So good, I mean, good luck healing this up. This is Marine Marauder Viking at the stage. Some Liberators have been added into the mix here too. There we go. Circles of Doom. Tectonic Sea Stabilizers has been researched. We can see the orange fire coming out of these Tempests now. Bonus damage versus buildings and sticking around just a second too long. Loses you a couple Tempests. Storms. Trying to connect. We're trying to bait out storms here. Mara's just like, all right, I have you contained. I'll expand again. 
I'm going to expand again. I'm going to keep making command centers so I can sack some of these SCVs. Get a bigger army than you. And the longer this goes on, the worse this is for Classic. You can't just sit here, man. I, just the number of games where you just sit here defending one base and you win in StarCraft 2 is super low. Disruptor shot. No. Disruptor killed. Carrier volley. There you go. One volley down. This is... And a Colossus 2 massive engagement there from Maru. Resources lost are double. Classic 13,500, Maru 6666. <laughs> yeah, see Maru expanding up here. Not even using these command centers. These are just orbitals now for mule purposes. These are orbitals too. This is nuts. He's got, uh, how many orbital commands does he have? He's got seven orbital commands. At 15 minutes. This has been one of the longer standoffs I've seen in a game of StarCraft in a while. I honestly cannot believe. Oh, well, there's your scan as Classic is trying to take the 12 o'clock. Just trying to be like, I can't just not expand. But then Maru sends some units up. Classic catches wind of that and says, uh, oh, he's not going to get there in time. To cancel. He's going to let it. He's going to let the Nexus finish and then jump on it. No, backs out. Doesn't like what he sees here necessarily. Mothership on the way. Big fan of the mothership. In its current iteration, it seems to get more use. Oh, new cut nukes. What? All right, I guess you got a ghost academy. You got a factory. You can do those nukes, and that nexus is dead. Okay, well, do, that, do not let... Do not... Okay. It actually killed three probes. And I think a pile... Oh, yeah, that previously injured pylon went down, too. So, I mean, that nuke paid for itself. I gotta say... Not. This is not good for Classic. The, the doubling of the resources lost number here is absolutely demoralizing for any Protoss watching this. You're like, what's going on? Feedbacks on the ghosts, but man, another carrier dies. I'm not sure the carriers have paid for themselves at all today. Eight carriers have died. I am not sure how many units they have killed at all. I mean, this high ground, another carrier down. Another carrier, one volley down. The SCVs. Some of them are dying in these storms, but the other ones are trying to repair these Vikings. They're taking hits from stalkers. They're taking hits from storms. Another nuke is on the way here from Maru. He's like, well, my first nuke wasn't a complete disaster. Huh. They usually are complete disasters, so that's good. I'm glad this one wasn't. Shield upgrade coming in. Sensor tower. Explodes. There's an SCV that could have repaired that, but all right. Priorities are elsewhere, I guess. So two bases left. Possibly be expanded to. A little Marauder group heads up this left way. Besides, they got spotted, so they come down to join the rest of the group here. Turrets, though. Look at this turret setup over here. Basically, you can bring the Vikings over. Really cause some problems. Liberators, too. Temp oh. The Sky Toss doesn't want to fight a bunch of turrets. Unless you got the Tempest are hitting him, in which case everything is totally fine. I love Classic not canceling that. And also having the guts to try to re-expand there. Maru is just closing his fist. Over Classic's army here. Ghosts eating some storms. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 he, no, no, classic, no, he takes the nuke to his entire army, everything dies, the follow-up, Maru charges up the ramp, lands the Vikings in victory, pose, and GG, what, it was solar, it was solar, right? Who had a couple instances in professional tournaments where he just got his entire army nuked. And everyone's like, so what are you doing? Um, That was classic here. That was classic here. Yeah, man. Mara was like, well, the first nuke killed three probes. That's pretty good. Let's sure. Let's try it again. This shouldn't work. Where are the obs? Where are the obs? There's an obs. There is an obs on the screen. Click the obs. It's down here, though. Can it really not? Hang on. Back it up. 
Yes, he has space under it. So here's our OBS. The only OBS on the entire map. Yep, you hear nuclear launch attack. And there's the dot. But no, the OBS down here in observation mode cannot see the ghost. You can hear it! Oh, no! Oh, no. I mean, look, I think Mara was winning this game anyway, right? Mara's expanding up on Classic's side of the map. Classic can't take this base, can't take this base. Wait, this base. It just economically was not going to work out for Classic to have a 2 to 1 resources loss ratio when Morrow has most of the map. That's it. That's the math in this situation. But dude, car 14 carriers died. I just I just don't I just don't understand carriers in the situation against Morrow. They did not pay for themselves in any way shape or form. The Tempest killed stuff. That was nice. But uh, 100 no, interceptors, 126 interceptors died. I just don't think they did. And yeah, I mean, look at this resources lost for Maru. Most of it's Vikings. The rest of it is a couple Marauders, three Ghosts, a couple of Liberators. 25 Vikings died. There are 20 out there at the end of the game. That's nuts. Wow. All right. So that is... That is an astounding way to end a game in GSL. But you know what? Sometimes the pros have a hard time finding the nuke dot too. But... I guess maybe Classic was just assuming the nuke was at one of his expansions. Oh, we should look at his camera. I want to do that real fast. So... Classic camera... Okay, nuke detected. His camera is on that nuke dot. Still on the nuke dot. Still on the nuke dot. Still on the nuke dot. He doesn't even look at his other bases at all. Did he just not hear? <laughs> oh. Wow. I don't know. I do not have an answer for that. I thought for sure Classic would have his camera somewhere else. He didn't. He simply didn't. And just paid the price for not respecting nukes, which is... <sighs> Amazing. All right. Well, at the end of the day, Maru just kind of saw what was going on and just kind of figured out the perfect answer to it. Expand a whole bunch, get a ton of Vikings, set up some turrets, contain, 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 deny bases... And then if we need to crack something, maybe nukes will get it done. Probably not, but let's give it a try. And that's why you should always give it a try. All right. Well, GG, man. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> kind of a stalemate in the end there, but a really exciting end. So, uh, GG. That's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.